Welcome back. My name is Jeff, and this is Word for Yours. Uh, okay, so Dark Matter. <laughs> Been on my TBR list forever. Everyone has recommended it to me. I finally got to it. Okay. <laughs> it starts off with an image of a guy making dinner for his family on family night. He has a loving wife, a loving teenager. Uh he is a scientist. He could have, uh, he could have, he could have pursued a career in physics. However, he gave it up to pursue his family instead. Um, one night on family night, he uh, his friend is getting the sign uh, science award. I forget what it's called. They're ha they're having a get together at this bar to congratulate him. His wife urges him to go. He goes. Um, congratulates his friend, something, something quantum physics. Um, he, he has a few beers, has a great time, is very happy, strolls back home where he is kidnapped. Well, not really kidnapped, but he is assaulted by a man in a geisha mask who looks strangely just like his build and strangely sounds just like him and strangely has all these other mannerisms. And, <laughs> um, okay, well, we figure out as the reader pretty early on that he's the same person from another dimension because it's, that's just how these stories go. Um, but he doesn't know that yet. So he's scared out of his mind. Um, so he, uh, so Mr. Protagonist ends up back at the other dimension. Um, the guy in the geisha mask, uh, it does turn out to be him from another dimension who wants to take his place in this dimension and, 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 shoves this guy into the other dimension without explaining anything to him. Um, and things get really exciting for a while. Um, the people in the other dimension uh, try to kill him. He has no idea why. All he knows is he needs to do is run. Um, it's very adventure-y. It's very, it's very um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A thrillery. <laughs> um, it smacks of Miracle on 34th Street meets the fugitive uh, because he gets to find out what his life would have been like uh, if he had uh, decided to pursue his career instead of the family. Um, except that everyone in this other dimension is very mean. Um, uh, they kill a lot of people. Spoiler. <laughs> he finds out what is, what is um, his wife would have been like had she pursued her, her art career. Um, and then he finds out he's in another, uh, uh, universe in this whole multiverse of places. He needs to get back to the rest of the book. Um, so, uh, it does its job. Well, it gets you emotionally vested into this main character, emotionally vested in one he wanting him to, uh, see the story out to the end, wanting things to turn out for him. It does it really well. It's, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Blake Crouch explains that the protagonist is where he is because of, well, he mushes together Schrodinger's cat, the double slit experiment and the observer effect all into one thing, um, which is absurdly wrong. Um, uh, he explains that, uh, the, the human observer can, uh, have an effect on where a particle is and whether or not it's a particle or, or a wave on the quantum scale. And that somehow scales up to the macro scale. You, me, everybody. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Schrodinger's cat. I'll link to a, a video in the description, something that goes into it further, but essentially, and I'm only explaining this because he goes into detail explaining this in the book. Um, Schrodinger's cat is basically a parable, uh, created by Edwin Schrodinger to explain how silly quantum physics actually is. He originally said it to, uh, illustrate the flaws in it, but it just caught on. Um, so you have a box, you put a cat in the box. Um, you have, uh, uh, um, a quantum particle, uh, that could either be, uh, and, uh, that could either be 
in a state of decay or in a state of whatever other state it is, <laughs> you have a detector that is uh, connected to uh, a vial of poison gas. Um, according to quantum physics, the superposition of states says that the particle is both in a decayed and non-decayed uh, state of being. So the, de uh, so the detector detects both of them. So the poison gas is either filling the box or it is not. So the cat is both alive and dead. And when you open the box, you... Uh, it was called collapsing the wave function um, to determine, uh, and then the cat becomes alive or dead. Okay, so this has been misinterpreted to say that the human observer, when the human observer opens the box, one of the possibilities comes into manifestation over the other one. This has been misinterpreted to say that humans have anything to do with the quantum world. Um. But in the book, that's how this works. They get into a literal box. <laughs> they even call it the box. Um, they take this drug so that their minds are completely blank and non-existent to allow the quantum world to open up the um, uh, the uh, the many worlds interpretation of. Uh, quantum physics, and that opens up all of these different universes that one can step into. And he even says that the human mind is so intrinsic to the collapse of the possibilities that your emotional state will dictate when you open the door. Uh, oh, you're inside the box or these doors. When you open the door, your emotional state will dictate what world you open it out into. Oh, God. <laughs> it is so wrong. Um, it would have been better off if he had just said, it just works, trust me. <laughs> or the whole thing is powered by hand wavium or something. But the fact that he went into detail about quantum physics and uh, the superposition of states and the double slit experiment and all this, and he, he, he took a while to explain all of it. Uh, it bothers me when... People get science so wrong in uh, books and movies and stuff because this is where people get their science from. Uh, most people don't care about, and most people don't care enough about science to go looking. Uh, most people who read this book didn't Google it. I guarantee you that. Um, there's at least someone running around in the world who thinks that they can open up a portal to another dimension based on their emotional state because they read this book and they probably don't remember where they got it. Um, there's another point where, okay, <laughs> this is probably just nitpicking, but there's another point, uh, where they say, well, they say that for some reason the box, the box is magnetic and they have no idea why, which is dumb because anything that runs on electricity is magnetic and has magnetic field. <laughs> Um, everything, uh, it just, a lot of times isn't enough to really overpower the earth's magnetic field, but it tends to be enough so that sharks can actually detect it in water. It's a thing. So it says the national geographic at one point, uh, the, uh, the, one of the worlds that they open up into is in the snowstorm and they go out and they explore and there, the snow has fallen so much that, that they lost the box. And, and the, um, Mr. Protagonist, he says, Hey, I got it. The box is magnetic. Remember I'll take out this, um, uh, compass that came in the backpacks that the society gave us and I'll use this compass to find the magnetic box. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so um, that doesn't work like that. Everything electric has a magnetic field. Compasses don't point to things that are magnetic. Even an MRI machine, when you get an MRI, they tell you to uh, take off all the magnetic jewelry, a lot of uh, nothing metal can be in the room because it'll fly right to the MRI machine and probably kill somebody or something. I mean, they're really magnetic. Um, but compasses don't point to hospitals. Compasses point north because the magnetic field only goes out so far. But in this book, it, it uh, the protagonist was like, oh, yeah, that's right. The box is magnetic. I'll just pull out this compass and we'll be, we'll be able to find it. No, dude, please. <laughs> that might be a little too far, but... 
It bugs me because most people get their signs from uh, books and movies. And when it's bad, no one checks up into it. So they end up being flat earthers and voting for people who don't think climate change is real or they think it's real and they, they, they pretend it's not man-made. Um, it just bothers me. But other than that, uh, the book was great. It was very adventurous. It was very exciting. Um, it did. It, it 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 was able to reach out from the page, grab your heartstrings, yank on them, play them like a fiddle, and give them back to you. You really cared what um, the protagonist, what their um, you, you cared what you cared what happened to the protagonist. You cared what happened, um, how it ended. Um, it did get a little. Uh, uh, gender stereotypy, but other than that, the book was great. Um, I doubt, uh, Mr. Blake really asked anybody, um, how anything was supposed to go. I would write him a letter, but he probably doesn't care. I'm sure plenty of people have written him letters and I'm sure he's drying his tears with all the money he made from book sales. <laughs> it's, uh, it's fine. Um, yeah, but other than that, it was great. Um, I give it a solid 7 out of 10 stars. Um, it would have been better if he had at least tried to get the science right. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching. May your library be fully funded and well stocked, and I will see you later. Just for